Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jillian Gray with your JCN News for this 26th day of January. Topping the news tonight, a mother calls for justice as a community is in shock as the ninth murder of the year has been committed on Key West Street off Palm Beach Street. Our Ani K. Archer has the details. Another murder has shocked the nation again. Brianna Mackey, 19 years old, was stabbed to death by who she called close friends apparently over a cracked cell phone. I'm here with her family in the background that had more than enough to say about the life and the person that she was. One day after celebrating her 19th birthday, Brianna Mackey was fatally stabbed, leaving her three-year-old daughter motherless. I spoke with the victim's mother, Hattie Mae Mackey, who gave this account of what led to her daughter's death. And these girls was out partying one evening. They was out partying, and these girls, she said the, the, the owner of the phone sent her in her bag to get her phone for her, so she went and she got the girl's phone. And she said when she was passing the phone to the girl, the phone dropped. And, and but Brianna said the phone that already had a crack on it. Because the girl, she came around here to me. And she said that Brianna have to pay her back for the phone, but Brianna didn't have no money. She said she, Brianna, she wanted $100 for Brianna. Well, a few times they came around here, and me and my daughter, we tell them do not come back around because the yard I live in is a police yard. And they caught her on the road. So yesterday she went, she said she was going to carry a piece of cake for her friend from her birthday. And that's when the girls them slide upon her. Right around Key West Street, they slide upon her and took her up. Brianna's older sister, Letitia Woodside, watched and held her younger sister in her arms as blood poured out the multiple stab wounds. Her eyes are still all white. No. I slap her up. I said, I'll get up. So she breathed. She said, Tisha, that's you. I said, yeah. So she said, Tisha, you love me, right? I said, yes, Brianna, I love you. She said, Brene, where Brene will see my daughter? Where Brene? She said, where mommy? She said, I remember mommy. She said, Tisha, I got dad, I got dad. She said, oh, she said, Lord, I got dad, I got dad. I said, Brianna, you ain't got dad. My sister gone. She tell me they kill her. My sister keep blocking her. I had to keep her waking up. I miss my sister. Miss Mackey said her daughter was a nice and friendly girl. Brianna was a nice, friendly person, and everybody loved her. You know, and she liked to party. You know, she really liked to party, man. She's a good person. And I really miss her. Just can't believe they take my daughter life just like that. Police have since taken in seven people, five females and two males. Brianna succumbed to her injury in the hospital. For JCI News, I'm Monique Archer. Piercing whales punctuated the songs and prayers sent up for the souls of the six who lost their lives in last week's plane crash and the families they left behind. A national tragedy that's brought together both sides of the political divide and hundreds of Androsians. Among those in the packed cathedral of Mount Olive Morgan's Bay Bluff was area MP Carlton Boleg, who admits he knew all of the victims. Pilot Darren Clark, Margaret Adderley, Valentino Cardinal Knowles, Carter Campbell, Desiree Russell, and 10-year-old Destiny Wilson. He said coincidentally on January 10th, he had a very uplifting con conversation with Miss Margaret as he called her. On Tuesday, he met young Destiny following a special assembly at Nichols Town Primary. Riding through low sound, he met Carter, with whom he had shared a special relationship. The last hand he shook at the airport before boarding a plane for New Providence was that of Darren Clark. We go through trials. We go through tribulations. There will be sorrows. But we will learn to lean together on the everlasting arms. Even though this road may be long and this journey may be hard, I want you, the people of North Andrus, that as long as we stand together, 
we will get through this. <clears throat> Even though the mountain may seem hard to climb, every day we're going to climb higher and higher together. Because we know, and my favorite song is, Lord, lift us up where we belong. We may mourn now, but I could assure you, joy is going to come in the morning for us. I always say to you before, and I will say to you forevermore, as long as bread is in my body, there's nothing that we can do without God. Also bringing words of comfort were Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis and opposition leader Philip Davis. I call upon the communities of Andrews to help sustain and to stay close to the families of the victims of this terrible misfortune. I wish to encourage you with words from an aunt named Arthur as follows. There is no storm that God won't carry you through, no bridge that God won't help you to cross. No battle that God won't help you to win. No heartache that God won't help you to let go of. He is so much bigger than anything you will face today. Leave everything in his hand and embrace the time confidently knowing that he will take care of you. Grief has a way of bringing people together to love each other even more deeply. And sadly, it has to be grief to bring those valuable traits out of us. While we come together in solidarity, we must also commit. We owe it to the victims to ensure that they have not died in vain. The six who died were on board a twin engine Aztec and were on their way to New Providence from San Andres when their plane went down in waters off Mastic Point. Civil aviation officials are actively investigating the matter. Well, the memorial may be over, but solace is far from the hearts and minds of family members of the fallen. Bishop Philip Campbell, brother of Ricardo Campbell, said just a few weeks before the crash, their family buried another brother, and to have another death is a burden they could hardly bear. The most painful part, Bishop Campbell said, is the fact that DNA results of the remains of those who were found have not been released. Our family have resolved we want a funeral service for our brother. And so the appeal is uh, as soon as we can get this issue resolved. My take is we are very appreciative to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas for all of the graciousness and everything that has been done here today. But uh, I think more critical than what happens today is can we have the results from the DNA as quickly as possible so that we can secure the remains of our loved ones and weep and bring closure to this process. Brother of Darren Clark, Edison Clark said their family is also doing the best they can to cope. I'm 100% I'm in agreement. Um, it, it would be awesome if they can, you know, expedite the process, you know, so that we can have some closure, like he said, you know, be able to visit you know the gravesite or whatever you know whatever is done you know so you can have closure and you know be able to feel more at peace as time goes by you be able to heal better with that closure you're watching jcn news stay with us this segment of the news was brought to you by alive